So I am delighted to be introducing Nina Gray. Nina, a California native, is a singer, songwriter, producer, and creative group facilitator using music and multimedia works to honor the spirit of love in all forms. Gray's confusion of, or fusion, <laughs> confusion, Gray's fusion of acoustic soul music with folk stylings has struck a chord with listeners worldwide with themes of unity and compassion weaving throughout her original works. Nina has opened up events for spiritual teachers, Reverend Michael Beckwith and Marian Williamson, poet and Q and conservationist Jane Goodall. With over 150 original music videos in her digital medicinal music cabinet, Gray is currently working on her fourth studio release to be released in the winter of 2023. And I'd like to just add that one of the highlights of my year last year was having Nina sing happy birthday to me. Mm. So I'm so thrilled to be introducing her and to have her back at Speakeasy. So I hand you Nina Gray. Thank you, Nia. Thank you, Maureen. All the helping hands that create this beautiful space to exist in and gather in. Speak easy community, everyone tuning in, sharing a song to start us that celebrates the spirit that moves us, that connects us, reminds us how beautiful this life is when we're working together with the spirit and the power that is in each other. Mm, this song is called Holy Spirit. I did not write this song. <laughs> There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. No thing can compare your my living hope. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your excited that we get to hear more music from you later just incredible and with that welcome to virtual speakeasy 
And Kate Soli Silva in Speakeasy is a spiritual home to me. Speakeasy is where we speak easily about the limitless nature of God, of love, of life. Here, we attempt to traverse through the tough, the tender topics in hopes of cultivating greater understanding and grace. I'm just gonna pause and breathe into that for just one second. It's so great to be with you this morning and every Sunday morning, frankly. Okay, this is your first time here, welcome. This is your second time, welcome back. Just inviting you too to consider, might this be your spiritual home as well? I'll pass it to Irene for our mission statement. Good morning, my name is Irene. I am delighted to share Speakeasy's mission statement. Speakeasy is a diverse and progressive spiritual community, sharing a message of love and engaging conversation that inspire creative expression and spiritual well-being. We honor the Divine Mother and follow the teachings of A Course in Miracles and the principles of love. We see you as a unique expression of love capable of divine embodiment. Truth is our passion. Love is our religion. Care is our currency. Peace is our goal. We attempt to speak easily about tough and tender topics so that we can navigate life with greater wisdom and grace. We devote this service to the Divine Mother, Mary Magdalene, Jesus, Buddha, and to all the holy names of God, to all saints and enlightened teachers, as well as our teachings, specifically the teachings of A Course in Miracles. We welcome you. So glad you're here. I'd like to take us a, um, a blessing and a meditation that I'm going to sing for you. And um, so if you would just close your eyes wherever you are, become present as I speak a blessing. Oh, holy and great love, I ask that you would bless us indeed and expand our consciousness, expand our territory, expand our idea of what is possible. May your hand be with us always, keeping us from fear so that we would be a source of blessing to ourselves and to others, never causing pain. And I invite everyone to take with me seven breaths our first breath is to be present in our body. Our second breath is to remember our unity with all life. Our third breath is to remember our creative power. And our fourth breath opens our heart. Our fifth breath opens the power of our voice. Our fifth, sixth breath opens our Christ vision. Our seventh breath connects us to source. And in the final breath, we experience the shift to peace. And we'll stay here just for a few, maybe half a minute. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou 
among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Christ consciousness, Holy Mary, Holy Mother of love, pray for us women and men, pray for us now and at the hour of our need, amen. Amen. Oh, Maureen, that was just so beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Really special. Um, and what a perfect foundation to provide to introduce our speaker for today. It's with such honor, such privilege that I get to introduce Reverend Celeste Frazier. Um, when I was doing just a little bit of refreshing on your bio, it really took me six scrolls to go down with all of your accomplishments. You know, when it's when we I look at your titles, spiritual leader, speaker, workshop facilitator, a, a ordained minister, podcast host, app creator of Conscious Grace, activist. D-E-I-B, thought leader, actress, producer, author. I mean, the list goes on and on. And so I am on bated breath waiting to hear your message of what heaven cracked open in your mind means to you to share with our community. And I also just wanna share my personal connection. I have to say, when I very first stumbled upon Speakeasy, because I really did stumble upon it. And I had the pleasure of hearing you speak. You were like a straight shot into my heart, Reverend mm -hmm. Celeste, and to my soul. Literally, every time I hear you speak, I wanna raise my hand and say, yes. And, and also I am filled with so much love and light. I had the opportunity to meet you in person last year. And I have to say, like right when we had our very first event and I had a fangirl moment, I was with my husband and I was like, um, Reverend Celeste, this is my husband and I'm Kate. Um, and so I just want to say, you know, I I really look to you as a mentor, a teacher and someone that I have the utmost respect for in how you show up in this space. And so with that, I really am yeah. such a privilege to turn this over to you now. Oof. Thank you. You got me tearing up here. That's what uh, Reverend Michael would teach us in homiletics class to have somebody hype you up before you go. And you did that, girl. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. That really means a lot. Not just to my ego. Uh, of course, it enjoys it. But that's my purpose. Ministry. There were always invitations and there were always fears. What happened with me was when spirit literally took me into its awareness and showed me what could never be put into words. Ministry for me is intentional service and complete expression. Yes is my soul's response to what I'm given. My yes is so deep now that it has its own force, a direct path to my essence. The invitations came early on. There was some degree of yes there all along. I have a recollection of being open. Some might say I was naive. The fear eventually brought the nose. Some fears came from experience, some from admonishment from others. I'm not sure what brought the nun slamming paddle on my butt or another nun's cracking a ruler on my knuckles. I wasn't alone. I knew it was punishment. I know now that discipline was the reason that parents sent their children to Catholic schools, but I'm not sure they taught us discipline. They taught us fear. There's a kindergarten picture on Facebook where I'm five years old and I look like a deer in the headlights on my class picture. I didn't post that. Another one of my kindergarten classmates did. What I recall most is the contradictions to what I knew in my soul. What they told me about God wasn't the God that I knew. For instance, I couldn't digest the notion that 
babies would go to purgatory when they died because of something called mortal sin. The propaganda was that we all had to pay for the sin of being a mortal. Adam and Eve mostly got the rap for it. And somehow after that, we were all guilty. I must have raised my hand because it did not sit well with me. This was not the God that I knew. Something was awry. They didn't like that very much when I disputed what they said. I remember little girls who said they wanted to be nuns and they created little habits for them and would take pictures of them. I remember the idea of wanting to serve God, but not liking that nun choice, what it would mean to my life. It was one of those calls to ministry, but it was not a yes. I never liked the crucifix. It was always difficult for me to understand why a father who loved his son would subject him to that cruelty. The fear of crucifixes did not go away. As a young adult traveling in Europe, the crucifixes were scarier than any I had seen. The grander the cathedrals, it seems the more horrific the crucifixes. And today, I am still not altogether comfortable passing the crucifix here in Chicago or Madison near Clark Street. In fact, I was interviewing for a job that was just across the street from the crucifix, and I was very relieved that I did not get that job. <laughs> The message is life is about suffering and you will be punished for your disobedience to the authorities. I feel so much for Yeshua's pain. That's Jesus's real name, Yeshua. It breaks my heart to see it. The message was that you were doomed to be punished because you are a sinner. So ministry was not appealing. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s assassination and the previous beatdowns of him and his followers were not appealing as a ministry. I liked very much what he stood for, but that kind of ministry was not to be for me, I thought. I do recall a devout practice of attending church every day in Lent around 1967, you know, receive the sacrament. And there was an access to the divine that enchanted me. I had sex early in the 70s. I smoked, drank, smoked reefers, and experimented with acid, THC, and cocaine in the mid-70s. I had become queer by the late 70s. I found many ways to sin, by the Catholic's definition. And they clearly showed me their immorality and criminality when I worked for the mayor's office of manpower. Because I was a Catholic girl, they assigned me to the archdiocese. Let's just say they weren't on the up and up. And based on that hypocrisy, they were no longer to be my guide. I had officially by their standards become a sinner. After all, they told me that's who I was from the start. I tried Buddhist chanting, being baptized in the pool by Baptists, no religion, and joining the first African Methodist Episcopal Church in Los Angeles. I was actively serving in community while connecting with my culture. It was where I met Rosa Parks, such a genteel lady. I was aligning with my religious self and social justice and that felt good. I had heard about Agape from friends for several years in the late eighties to early nineties, but I did not want to mix my church with my entertainment career. There was too much Hollywood up in Agape and I wasn't trying to go there. <laughs> It wasn't until 1997 when my multi-million dollar deal, film deal in Canada fell through, the story of a police brutality cover-up, because I couldn't get a U.S. distribution company to distribute a film about police brutality on Black people. <laughs> Fancy that. I was so depressed, and an actor's friend of mine invited me to go to church at Agape, and I went. The clear feeling of unconditional love was there. A connection to community was there. A creative community was there. And a message was there that allowed me to breathe. There was no mention of sinning, no guilt, no shaming. And a truth was being revealed that was indisputable. I hungered for more. I took a foundations class. When Reverend Nirvana went around the room asking why we were here, my response was because it's where God wants me to be. Since God wanted me in ministry, that was a perfect place for me. I still didn't know that then. 
I still didn't realize ministry was mine. And I have no idea why I said that. I was clear that spiritual study was something I hungered for and would be excited by everything that I learned. I took to the science of mind principles like water to my body. As complex as they might seem to people, there was a dimension of me that clearly was aligned. I'm sure it's because it's based on ancient wisdom. My maternal grandmother died a few weeks after that foundation class. I was the designated presenter at the family funerals because of my theatrical background. That weekend, the veil lifted and I got all kinds of messages from spirit. Heaven cracked open my mind. Look at this book, look at that scripture. My ancestors came to me feeding me information. In fact, they stayed with me. And there was something directly downloading what I needed to say. As I gave my tribute, the word obedient came out of my mouth. I played it off like I didn't have all my glasses. I couldn't see what was on the page, but it was confirmation that I had been obedient. The response to that talk was phenomenal. It surprised me. When I was done, the minister assigned to the service said I had done the eulogy. Oops. As I was leaving, someone said, there goes the minister. It kind of shocked me a little bit. My mother relayed to me later that someone asked her if I was going to be a minister, and she told them no. And I said to her, let's not say no right now, because I knew something was happening. I kept taking classes, and when the basic classes were over, they had a practitioner preview to ask questions to see whether or not you wanted to show up for practitioner training. When I found out it was about service, I knew I could do it. I know service. I embrace service. In service, I'm tireless. Before I went through practitioner training, I was already doing ministry. I ran the New Light Review Roadshow where I would take entertainers, singers, belly dancers, girls on 10 foot stilts, guitarists, all kinds of performers with me as I gave a message and performed a, a poem or two or a monologue. We would go to senior citizen facilities, children's hospitals and Terminal Island Federal Prison. The elders would get out of their wheelchairs. A little boy on a stretcher would sit up and talk about courage. All kinds of miracles occurred. Something was going on and I loved it. I can't remember what class it was. It might've been self-mastery. We were in pods at Agape because there were so many people. A pod might consist of up to 10 people. And I remember opening my mouth in a pod one day and what came out was incredible. I did not know the things that I was saying. And everyone around me in my pod looked at me with wonder and their jaws dropped. I didn't understand it. But I do remember the night before feeling that I was going down a very deep abyss and making a conscious decision to stay on earth. I came to know that something was in charge, excuse me, other than me. And it was amazing. My prayers prayed me. I worked the prayer line at Agape from my second year of practitioner training through acquiring my license and beyond. I was part of the team to reestablish the live prayer ministry for what was then a United Church of Religious Science. It had started at Founders Ch Church many years, decades ago, and then it was being revived at the Burbank Office of Centers for Spiritual Living. I worked there throughout my ministerial training. When I came to Chicago to open my center in Hyde Park, no one would ask for prayer. <laughs> I was like, what? So I called the prayer ministry and asked them to send me a phone. I prayed for people around the world and it was my honor. My ministry has been interesting. I continue to do my Agape Intervisions writing as I started doing once I became an Agape licensed practitioner. By the way, I graduated from Agape in the morning and Centers for Spiritual Living in the afternoon. That's another story I won't get into. There's only two people in the world I think that can say that. I had asked Reverend Michael to come to my CSL graduation and he did. He had just separated from CSL. 
I asked him to help my mom place my master's collar on me, and he did. So as quiet as it's kept, I am an agape minister as well. People did eventually start asking for prayer, and I did start to develop a client base of people coming to me for spiritual counseling. And my ministry has been more than that in the pulpit. I've come to know that ministry is everything I do. As a visioning facilitator for Centers for Spiritual Living, I introduced many new thought centers to the practice of visioning. In the work that I did for CSL around diversity, equity, and inclusion, that was a ministry. In the ways that I show up for people in the workplace, that's my ministry. And I encourage ministerial students. I'm asked to speak with ministerial students who have a requirement to take a diversity class. I professed that my ministry was about stimulating minds and engaging hearts. When I'm writing, it's my ministry. When I'm teaching and giving workshops, that's my ministry. In the odd jobs that I do, being in an airport, traveling on planes, I do ministry. Yes, I've pastored three centers for spiritual living communities. Those are talks in and of themselves. <laughs> Before coming to Miracles Live 365, I would teach a course in Miracles on Facebook Live, and I had previously taught it at Power of Oneness. I continue to learn as a minister. I've been studying with Dr. Will Coleman, everything from unity principles to expanded Kabbalah lessons to African spirituality to learning the symbolism and substances of Hebrew, Latin, and Greek languages, to tarot, to hoodoo. We are in an intense hoodoo class right now. So you'll probably start hearing more things that you've not heard me say before because it's already started. <clears throat> I study with him because he continues to connect me with that dimension of myself that is my ancestors. And so I know that's my core. So I have a visceral connection there that I'm able to sense my spiritual history deeply. I feel like since my ordination in 2009, I continue to be ordained because I continue to maintain my commitment to ministry. Howard Thurman said, commitment means that it is possible for a man, woman, to yield the nerve center of her consent to a purpose or a cause, a movement or an ideal, which may be more important to her than whether she lives or dies. The commitment is a self-conscious act of will by which she affirms her identification with what she is committed to. The character of her commitment is determined by that to which the center or core of her consent is given. I know that's saying a lot, but it really comes down to yes. It really comes down to a voluntary Yes, this is beyond something conscious. It really comes down to connecting with purpose. And I know, of course, in Miracles talks a lot about purpose. It's essentially love and expression. Being the event coordinator for Celebrating Our Soul, a new thought conference by people of African descent is a ministry for me. This event that's coming up August 11th through 14th down at Unity Village. As a member of the planning team, we're creating content for healing many aspects of our lives. Not only for African-Americans in New Thought, but for everyone in New Thought. Religiosity does not make you immune from the creepy egoic dominations of the world. It just gives you pretty language to cover your misguided and unhealed habits. This event is such a healing that is renewing hope for many people who've been forlorn. It is giving non-Black people a way to heal from the guilt and shame of their past blind spots. It is a means by which we can all do self-care and support each other in being in our joy. Everyone who is committed to being in service there is equally committed to our own self-discovery and true empowerment. It's really a very special event. I've been driven to work on it. Oftentimes when I'm in the midst of doing something else, I feel that it's part of my ministry because it pulls together my production background, my speaking, my event planning, my team building, my eye for details, my visionary aptitude, 
and my love for people. My love for new thought as a whole and my love for people of African descent is part of the fabric of who I am. And so it is my joy to be in this significant role. I am gratified and charged up when I hear people say, I've been praying for this, or I'm so excited, or there are so many great workshops to choose from. How can I possibly only choose three? It gives people something to look forward to in a time of challenge. It gives people hope in these times of despair. I admit there are times when I am more consensual to spirit than other times. I'm continually surprised by my yes. I'm surprised when the Black Madonna rises in me, thrilled really. I'm grateful when the Divine Feminine calls me to serve as she leaves her imprint on my soul. I'm grateful when the Course continues to open my eyes over and over again to the depths of my being. I personally have never been able to read the Course on a surface level. It is like taking a direct shot to my soul. It's like caffeine to stimulate my awareness of who I am beyond ego. It continues to break down the walls of separation in my mind. I have healed many relationships and I'm in the process of healing more relationships where I become aware of my perception of separation. When I left Oakland, and wasn't sure where I was headed, a message clearly came through to do the course. I had stopped doing it for about six months during the last part of my ministry in Oakland. And I really had some forgiveness to do work to do after leaving Oakland. And I discovered that I could not keep it out of my life. Then Maureen called and asked me to teach the course for Speakeasy. My forgiveness work must continue because it keeps me in touch with who I am. Howard Thurman talks about the dust and grit of the journey in his book, Meditations of the Heart. I often refer to it like in my ordination. He says in part, despite the dullness and barrenness of the days that pass, if I search with due diligence, I can always find a deposit left by some former radiance. But I had forgotten. At the time it was full orbed, glorious and resplendent. And I was sure I would never forget in the moment of its fullness, I was sure that it would illumine my path for all the rest of my journey. I had forgotten how easy it is to forget. He goes on to talk about how the details, the lower level demands, the wear and tear crept in. There had been no direct challenge. If there had been, he would have fought it to the end and beyond. His prayer is simply, keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. I often remember that when I start to feel a little bit of a disconnect. I just know the ministry work is surrender. And that prayer, keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve, is a reminder to surrender to Elohim, to the presence beyond the distractions. We unconsciously make many things gods in our lives. And the most dangerous thing about that is that it disconnects us from being the God that we are. I invite you to stay connected to a teaching that is restorative, to a practice that sustains your connection with the presence and a study that keeps you in touch with your authentic self. It will support you in any and everything. Namaste. Well, hand to heart, big exhale, just let out. Thank you so very much for sharing your evolution in your ministry, what that continued evolution looks like and what that can mean for us. Um, I'm really looking forward to unpacking this a little bit more in our conversation. Before we do that, I wanna turn it over for another beautiful moment from Nina Gray. So moved. Thank you. Thank you so much. Mm. 
sharing a song, Digital Detox, inspired and <laughs> made even more affirmative in that space you spoke of, keep fresh before me the moments of my high resolve. I know social media can be a beautiful tool to share messages. It can also be a distraction from that connection that we so yearn for. So this song um, was written in the spirit of coming back <laughs> and being mindful with its use. Scrolling, clicking, liking, but where's my soul? Ah, posting, commenting on pictures, but where'd I go? And lately all this screen time's making me tired and I never felt so alone. Oh, I gotta free my mind. I gotta free my mind. Gotta free my mind. Yeah, I gotta free my mind. I gotta free my mind. Gotta free my mind. I never used the word addiction. Felt too strong. But if I'm being honest, I can't give it up for long. No, but something doesn't feel right. Spending my nights just watching these lives scroll by. And sometimes I want to run and hear nothing but the wind against my skin. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes I want to derive to the edge of the land where it's kissing the ocean. Oh. In real time, ooh, this peace I crave these days cannot find online. I cannot, I cannot, I cannot. No, I cannot find. I've been looking, 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 but I feel it when you're here with me, and I feel it when I can hear you breathe. I feel it with your arms around me. Oh, I feel it. And it feels so good to me. And it feels so good. Cause I don't need that why. When I got your eyes, I don't need high speed. With the presence all around me, I don't need any pictures. I don't need emojis. I just get to feel the power of life all around me, all around me. A mindful relationship with technology and social media be dropped into the middle. <laughs>
Yeah. I feel you. Our community is feeling you and really that connection to and the remembering to come back to ourself and exactly what Reverend Celeste talked about, that space to connect to our authentic selves. And we're going to have some of that space a little bit later on in our conversation. Before we do, I'm going to pass it over to Jody, who's going to tell us about not just the things that we can do on Sundays together, but all the ways that we can stay connected and true to ourselves throughout the week. Good morning, everybody. I am Jody Murphy, and I am a precious baby girl of all that is and a faith-filled member of Speakeasy Community. Speakeasy is a virtual spiritual community with a full calendar of events available to support your spiritual journey throughout the week. Some of this week's events are Culture Club with Reverend Celeste Frazier today at 3 p.m. Central Standard Time and Sacred Sanctuary tonight at 8.18 p.m. There's a Mother Moon gathering on Monday, a Mary Magdalena meditation circle on Saturday, and two salons are meeting this week. The you, the you Dating Salon and our new tech salon where you can learn about Zoom. <laughs> yes, that is a very valuable skill. Okay. Um, sorry about that. Uh, you can also find a link to our calendar of events in the chat or at speakeasyspiritualcommunity.com. There you'll find Zoom details and times and registrations for each of the events above and many more. Please take a look at our website to see where you can get involved in all our community has to offer. Speakeasy is a nonprofit community and we exist on the generation, generosity of our community members. We thank you for playing your part and for taking the opportunity to make a donation for da today's daily bread. Your generous donations help us bring spiritual leaders, our artists, and speakers to Sunday service and keep important conversations going. And so today, I, I invite you to go within and see what is yours to share. The donation link is in the chat, as well as in our website, speakeasy community, speakeasy spiritual community.com. Thank you so much for your generous support. Well, sweet baby girl, you just rock that. Thank you so much, <laughs> Judy, for letting us know all the ways that we can stay connected to one another. And so in what we were talking about with having a chance to be in community and to conversate, now's the time for us to do just that. And it's one of the places that makes our spiritual home so unique on Sundays. So this is a time where you get to speak easily, find your voice, step into that authentic truth for yourself, share your inspirations, what moved you today, what questions came up for you. So when you feel called, to share a comment or question, just please raise your virtual hand. And if you can't find that, it, it's at the bottom of the reactions tab in your screen. And know to leave your video on when you're doing so, because we want to see you. We want to know you. Okay? So with that, we'll kick off the conversation. Yeah, your message and your ministry, heaven cracking you open. And if I can, I just want to kick this conversation off with, wow. I really took away a different look and a different perspective around what ministry can mean to not only to you, but to each one of us and how our actions throughout our day are ministry. And so I really wanted to just offer that up as a starting point for conversation and to say thank you so much um, because it really did shift for me today around cool. what that can look like. Yeah. And They're so, Sherry. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Sherry. Hey there. Hi, yeah. What? That was awesome. <laughs> that was so awesome. And like getting to really take your spiritual pilgrimage with you and to mm. see the long haul of it all. And it just mm. reminded me of um, Katan, uh, Katan G. Brown's Judge, Judge Jackson, who yeah. um, the Harvard, you know, um, uh, campus uh, got that one word which was persevere you know 
and like how that was given to her from another woman of color in the sea of white faces at Harvard. And like your word to us today was keep fresh your result. Like it's the same message. And uh, I just, I just love that. I just love that, you know, that you told us like the back end of it because you do meet up with those, a lot of those, like, what am I doing and why am I doing this? And what I was interested in, Reverend Celeste, First of all, just thank you for everything. But what I was interested in was what I love that that thing that kept you out of agape, which was like God doesn't do Hollywood. I don't want to mix those two. You know what I mean? And like those weird things that we decide that are just simply not true. You know? Right. And you right. know, like recently we we're doing a thing on abundance, and it's like God does abundance. God does Hollywood. And. Um, <laughs> For me, because I, I had that same thing, I was like, now I'm doing Hollywood, now I'm doing God. And currently I feel like I'm learning how to mix it and be okay with it. And it's interesting because the things that my mouth says in stand-up are so inappropriate. <laughs> but like, but it's also like, it's okay. And I just wondered, like, how do you allow yourself to bring the full faceted version of yourself? And I know you're so unapologetic, but like, you do meet up with those those conceived con um, contradictions and they're wrong, right? I'm just, I'm just asking you to speak on that. I say yes to everything that my spirit calls me to do. Um, <laughs> and I am exhausted, but I don't think that my life is a waste. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, I know, you know, what I have to do because it comes from inside of me and pushes me. Yes. Like, I don't like say, oh, well, what can I do next? No, right. there's like no need to add anything to my agenda. <laughs> right? Right. And, um, and I just clear, I just clearly get that it's mine. Um, and so I, I held a big container from my ministry to say that I want to um, stimulate minds and engage hearts. And so that happens in so many ways. I can't limit that. Yeah. Yeah, and one other thing I heard you say, which I think is really important, is that you like come to find your voice, and then you come to lose your voice because it's no longer your mm -hmm. voice. You know, mm -hmm. and it's really cool when mm -hmm. that happens, and we see that happen with a lot of women and men in this community. They start spitting truth, and like just like that moment you had was like, I didn't know that I knew that, but I knew it was mine, but it also was from another entity, and that's yeah. I'm just grateful that you continue to be such a channel and I'll deep bow, deep bow. <laughs> <laughs> deep bow back. <laughs> yeah. And Celeste, I really enjoyed this. Um, I've highlighted three things that stuck out, stuck out for me. I'm a big note taker. <laughs> um, intentional <laughs> services ministry. I adore that. I, it was not a way I'd ever looked at the definition of ministry. And it says to me that, be in, you are be intentional everywhere you go and you're being a minister everywhere you go. And that's just mm -hmm. a new concept for me. And I love that. Thank you for sharing that. And uh, ministry work is surrender. That touched my heart. That's the hardest part. <laughs> yeah. Ministry work is surrender. And uh, purpose is love and expression. So those three things stuck out and they they're things that I will ponder over the next couple of weeks and get closer to. But the intentional services ministry, thank you so much for that definition. It, it just broadens everything in my mind. You want to say, yeah, I always else? say we're the way that God gets around. Yeah. I love that. Love that too. Thank you. Thank you. Hey Bella. Um, there were so many places where I was, just felt like I was right with you inside your journey. And mm. um, yeah, I just really felt your heart, my heart. I felt like our hearts were one. Mm. And there was one question I had is, you know, as as these downloads were coming, you know, and you were getting your guidance, um, you know, do you feel like a lot of people left your life and new people came in? Or do you feel like the relationships that you had actually improved? Definitely the second. Um, it, it just has to because, you know, 
<laughs> the focus is no longer on changing them. It's, you know, it's, it's my work to do. Um, but in terms of the first, well, it's interesting. Um, I say my, my, my real friends are still here. And um, interestingly enough, some of them, you know, saw, perceived me as religious, you know, like mm -hmm. people I used to like produce with or, you know, yeah. perform with and stuff. And so, and so now they're doing stuff like, you know, spiritual stuff. And it's just like, oh, I just said to somebody the other day that, that um, was doing something in, in LA in Lamert Park. I'm like, oh, look at you, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, everybody is aligned spiritually and, you know, I knew that about them when we were friends um, because that was always the connection with anybody is spirit, right? Yeah. But um, those, and I don't remember anybody like I'm leaving or, you know, I'm, or me saying I'm leaving. It's just where you are taken is, you know, your destination and whoever needs to be there is there. Yeah. Yeah, I just uh, wondered if there was any space or place or time in your journey where you um, struggled with that at all, or if it just was natural for you. Sure, there was probably a concern, like, like even now dating is just like, okay, how come they haven't said anything about spirit? Like, why have they not said anything about that and this gets kind of like you know if somebody says they're atheist then I'm you know I'm not engaging <laughs> right because I mean what do we talk about right <laughs> so but um yeah I mean but I've never had to like choose like consciously in a relationship and say well if you're not then never mind I just you know love them where they are yeah. You know, we may not spend as much time together, but that doesn't stop me from loving them. Yeah. Well, I just want to thank you for the gift that you are. I mean, you are. Really, Aww, like, thank you. you know, love you. Thank you. Love you, too. Rania, is that how you pronounce it? It is. You got that perfect. Um, so thank you. Uh, it's just been a really beautiful service this morning. And thank you for um, sharing your journey. Uh, this might be a, a, a bigger question, but it's related to what Beth just asked about uh, relationships. What I'm really curious about, um, especially as a female human person, uh, what was it like with your relationship with yourself along this journey, especially with relationship to your um, inner strength, or I think the language you used is essence. So how, how did that evolve? I mean, were you always a confident person, for example, or how did that relationship with self evolve or change, especially power on the power side? Well, self is spirit for me. So when spirit says this is the direction, then that's where I go. Um, I wanted to get to your one question. I should have written it down because you said a whole lot there. But um, I'm, I'm when I when I shared that that word obedient came out um, at my grandmother's service. That was like that word. I didn't use that word. I, you know, I didn't use obedient. That wasn't something I did. I wasn't obedient to anybody. <laughs> but once it was out there, that's what it was. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. that's it. In in terms that of surrender, about. in terms of surrender, yeah. 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 And yeah. so how did you, and where did that courage come from? Just your relationship to spirit is what you're saying. Well, yeah, because that's the most important relationship. Mm -hmm. And um, that's how it shows up in everybody. And so it has 
my transformation has transformed the people in my life. Yes. Mm-hmm. So like my family, you know, once I decide I'm forgiving you and your mess ain't going to bother me anymore, then ain't no problem. There's mm-hmm. no conflict. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know, when I was a kid and Johnny Coleman's church moved down the street from where we live, my mother used to say them positive thinking people, you know, and I was like, what's wrong with that? And then, you know, I had her, you know, come to me at Agape and first time she heard Reverend Michael, he was like, do you understand what I'm saying? And she's like, no. (laughs) So then fast forward, you know, four or five years later, she's using spiritual principle to correct me. Hmm. (laughs) So it's contagious, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know? Beautiful. I see two people's hands up. You, you, are you I got navigating you. this page? I got you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Mia. Come on in, and then Justine, and we see you too. Thank you so much. Thank you, Reverend Celeste. It's <laughs> so hey, inspiring. Mia. Hey. Um, you know, I went to Catholic school because we only had Catholic school. <laughs> Up until 20 years ago in Ireland, there was no other schools. And when another school opened, the first one in Limerick, I mean, everybody was just like, oh, my God, this can't happen. And what about those poor children? And, you know, how will they survive without Catholicism? And I mean, it was crazy what went on around the school opening. And people were judged for sending their kids to it. and, And even now... Um, most of our schools are still Catholic, but there's a few um, other ones. So we were told about the calling frequently. You know, a priest would come into the class and we were told to listen, you know, for the calling that we might get it. And I've, I know I've shared this with this community before. Like I literally used to be praying, please don't call me, please don't call me, please don't call me. <laughs> and as I got older, it was, please don't call me. I want to have sex. Please don't call me. I want to have sex. <laughs> and Eventually, you know, I realized, like you, that the calling was something else. And the first time I realized I'd been called was when I, I, I began to be called to teach yoga. And, and that was my first calling. And when I was teaching yoga, I used to teach Kundalini yoga. And I remember sitting there one day in my whites and, you know, this stuff coming out through me and, and somebody at the end of the class saying, oh, my God, this was amazing what you said. And I, I actually couldn't recall what I'd said or how I'd said it or who had said it. It was just something moving through me. And, you know, fast forward to, you know, this place today where, you know, through this community, I guess I've learned and through Course in Miracles to get up and surrender every day. But there's still this sort of fear in me in terms of, you know, the country that I live in, like Mm. there aren't, there is nothing like this here. Um, We have a few churches and, you know, and I mean, just a few, you know, we have mostly Catholic, we have a few Protestant churches and more recently we have a couple of Baptist churches and born again Christian churches, but that's it, you know, (laughs) just communities like this don't exist. And it's like, I think we've got something in Ireland. Agape have, have they? No, oh. you. Pardon? You, Mia. Oh, me? <laughs> 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 right, well. <laughs> well, I, yeah, I was, you definitely, but I was I was referring to Science of Mind, and I'm going to check because they sent me a whole bunch of magazines. Well, yeah, they, they don't well, list I would them love anymore. To they, they possibly have something in Dublin. Yeah. Yeah, I'd love to hear about that. But yeah, you know, we definitely we definitely have something there. I don't know what it is, but I, you know, I'll, I'll look at that. Please do. Please do. Mm-hmm. And, and I guess my, it's not a question, I suppose. It's just kind of noting that place of being called to expand in a place where, you know, there's also that fear of what's going to be asked of me. And I think for me, that place where, I felt in my earlier life that I was kind of used to cause problems or stick out or, you know, and then I learned not to do that. And now there's this kind of dance going on with, you know, 
standing out or kind of, you know, going back into the, feels like a Lilith and, Gra- uh, Lilith and Eve dance sort of thing that goes on, you know. Um, yeah. And I'm just wondering, was there a place for you, like where you just went, fuck it, <laughs> I'm stepping in. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, and, uh, and I've described, you know, a couple of those moments today. And, mm. you know, and I, I have to say to you um, that, yeah, uh, you just have to, you know, say yes to spirit. You are God. And everybody else is trying to tell you what God is and, or that they are God. And unless you accept your Godhood, your Christhood, you know, your spiritual authority, you will be dictated to by other people and nobody will get the benefit of what you have to offer. Yeah. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Another mic drop moment.